The peninsula of Siwash Lemnos. Deserted. No one steps foot here. The Eptolemus, son of Achilles. Your father was best of the Greeks. It was here I marooned the Malian, the son of Poyas, under orders. His wounded foot was weak and diseased, and no libation, nor sacrifice could be made while he cursed the fleet with his horrendous wailing, constantly screaming and shouting. Ah, I shouldn't speak of such things. There is no time for talk. If he finds out I'm here, then my plans taken by surprise will be wasted. Now, to work. You must undertake this task. Search this place for a cave with two mouths, both kissed by warming winter suns and cooled by summer breezes wafting through the tunnel. Beneath, a little to the left, you'll find a freshwater spring, if it still flows. Move stealthily and signal whether he is still there or we should be looking in some other place. <sighs> Once you're done, I will explain our mission. And when you understand, we'll complete it together. Lord Odysseus, your task will not take long. I think I can see the cave you described. Above or below? I cannot see. Up here, and there's a trail, but... Not a sound. Look inside. He could be sleeping. I'm looking. It's empty, not a soul. No sign of habitation? There's a bed of leaves. Somebody has been here. Is there is it otherwise empty? Is there anything else in there? A wooden beaker. Some man's crude handiwork. And a few scattered piles of firewood. To him those are treasures. <laughs> oh, oh. Rags. Drying in the sun. Wrappings. A rancid wound. Then clearly the man still lives in these parts. He must be close. A man can't get very far on a foot mutilated by that merciless disease. He may be out foraging for food or some pain-relieving herb he has found growing here. Order your man to keep watch in case he returns and catches us off guard. Out of all the Greeks, he would love to get his hands on me. My man is on his way. The trail will be watched. But there's more you need to tell me. Can, can you speak now? Son of Achilles, you must stay true to this task and your lineage in both mind and body. Should you see something else unfold or another plan unveil itself, you must still serve. You are here to serve. What are your orders? You must manoeuvre the mind of Philoctetes and deceive him with beguiling words. When he asks who you are and where you come from, tell him you're the son of Achilles. That should never be hidden. But tell him you are heading home and abandoning the Greek war fleet, bearing a great grudge. Say he, they implored you to leave home and join them as the only man who could bring down Troy. But they did not regard you worthy of Achilles' arms when you uh, claimed them by right of true birth. Instead, they awarded them to Odysseus. Say what you will, as bad as bad can be, the worst imaginable, it will not harm me. But should you fail in this task, you will inflict terrible pain on your fellow Greeks. If you cannot capture his bow, you will never take Troy. Ah, oh, look, you know I can never speak to him as you can. He will trust you, and you will stay safe. You swore no oath, you were not forced to sail, nor did you have any part in the first voyage here. I cannot deny any of these charges. If you find me here while he still has his bow, I am a dead man, and as my companion, you will share my fate. No, this must be expertly contrived so you can take his unassailable weapon by stealth. Son... I know that it is not in your nature to imagine or articulate such cunning. But victory is sweet, and he who dares wins. One day it will be proved that we were right. So give me just one little day of shamelessness. And for the rest of time, you will be known as the most virtuous of all living men. My words are too painful to hear, son of Laertes, and I hate to have to put them into action. And it is not in my nature to practice treachery, nor, so I am told, was it my father's? I am more than ready to take him by force, but not by deception. He's just one man, with one foot. How could he hope to have a defeat so many of us? But I'm here to serve alongside you, and I fear being called a traitor. My lord, I would rather do right and fail than do wrong to win. You are your father's son. When I was young like you, I too had a reticent tongue and quick hand. But now, when I consider all I've seen, I know that men are mastered by words, not deeds. What are you telling me then? That I should lie? I'm telling you, you must take Philoctetes by deception. Why must I deceive him? I could persuade him. <laughs> you will not listen, and you won't take him by force. What terrifying powers make him so bold? 
inescapable arrows that send certain death. No one will dare go near him. As I said, he will be taken only by deception. Don't you think it's shameful to lie? Not if the library's deliverance. How can such a liar have a show his face? Never hide when there's profit to be gained. How do I profit if he comes to Troy? Troy cannot be taken without his bow. But you said I would take Troy, didn't you? Neither you without the bow, nor the bow without you. Then, if that's the way it's to be, I, I should hunt him down. Do this, and there are two rewards to be gained. What are they? Show me how I can accept this task. You would be called true and courageous. Then, come what may, I'll put my shame aside and do it. You will remember what I've taught you? Absolutely, now that we've agreed. Then stay here and wait for him. I'll leave so he doesn't see me with you. Order your sentry back to the ship. If I think you are taking too long, I will send him back to Skye for the master of a trading vessel. We have secrecy on our side. And son, as he spins his story, take your cues from his speech and turn them to your advantage. I must go. The rest is up to you. Hermes tricks to God guide us. Athena, my constant saviour, bring victory. What can I do? What can I do? A stranger in a strange land. What to hide, what to say to a man who knows not to trust. Sir, give us your advice. Your skills and judgments surpass ours. You hold the God-given scepter of Zeus, ancient sovereignty handed down. How best can we serve you? Do you want to see where he lives? Up there, clinging to the coastline. There's nothing to fear when this dreaded drifter returns. Just watch out for my signal and come and help if I need you. I always look out for you, sir, and I'll keep a careful eye on you now. But describe to us this shelter he has made his home. And where do you think he is now? You see that rock with two entrances carved? That is where he lives. Where does he go? Where does he rest? Is he here now or somewhere else? Here. Scavenging for food? With that twisted link, he can't be that far away. I heard it said that he lives by feeding on wild beasts felled by his poisoned arrows. Misery. And more misery. And never the hope of a cure. I feel sorry for him. To think he's had no one to care for him. To think he's never seen a friendly face. Alone. Always alone. Ravaged by a foul disease adrift at meeting his needs. How does he even survive? Oh, what schemes the gods have a hand in. And poor humanity, when one becomes more than one can learn. He was born nobility, from a house second to none. How he has lost everything, alone without a friend in the world, living amongst beasts in the wilds, hungry, miserable, desperate, suffering incurable, endless agony. The only answer to his helpless cries is the perpetual call of Echo, far, far away in the distance. None of this amazes me. It was the will of the gods, if I'm any kind of judge. Savage Christy sent this lonely, solitary suffering. It must have been ordained to prevent him from bending his God-given bow against Troy until that time when the city is destined to fall. Be quiet, boy. What is it? A sound falling on the air. A broken moan. It came from over there or somewhere. It falls again and again. There, up the trail. A man crawling in agony. There's no mistaking those cries. I know the sound of suffering. But wait, my boy. What? Another thought. He's not far off now and getting closer. This isn't some country bumpkin coming home to play his pipe. Do you hear that howling? He's fallen, hobbling home, racked in pain. He's groaning in anguish. Or oh. oh, he's seen a ship anchored off these inhospitable shores. Those are terrible cries. Oh. 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 your ship on these desolate and inhospitable shores. What's your country? 
Your people. You look like Greeks to me. <laughs> Greeks. What a sight for my sore eyes. Go on, let me hear you speak. Say something. Don't be afraid. I know I must look like a wild man, but have a heart for what I've endured. I have no one. Nothing. I'm all alone. Say something. Please, if you're friendly, let me hear you speak. Don't let me down. Not now. It'd be bad for the both of us. Stranger, I can tell you what you want to know. We are indeed Greeks. Oh, what a beautiful sound. I can't believe after all this time a Greek is finally speaking to me. <laughs> so, what, what drew you here? What kind of wind, what bold venture brought you to these coasts? Tell me everything. Tell me who you are. I come from the island of Skyrus, and I'm homeward bound. My name is Neoptolemus, I'm the son of Achilles. Oh, son of a beloved father and a fine country. You must have been raised by old Lycomedes. So, what, what brought you here? Where did you sail from? I was out from Troy. What are you saying? You weren't with us when we launched on Troy. You were part of that campaign? Son, have you no idea who I am? How could I know someone I've never seen before? Have you never heard my name, nor anyone speak of my sufferer? You're asking me questions I know nothing about. I must be the most detested of man, hated by all the gods, and no word of my suffering has reached home, nor anything is known throughout all of Greece. Those deprived men who root me here cackle at each other. Their secret safe as my sickness surges on in strength. Oh, my son, son of Achilles, you must have heard of me. I am the one called Master of the Bow of Heracles, the son of Poyas, Philoctetes, whom the twin commanders and that Cephalanian king shamefully marooned on this island. I was stricken by a terrible plague, the vicious brand of a murderous serpent's bite. With that for company, my son, they brought me here deserted. After we put out from Chrysia Island, at sea all I could do was writhe in pain. Finally, we came ashore here, and I found shelter in this cave. I fell asleep, exhausted, and they, they abandoned me, leaving me next to nothing, a few filthy racks, and food not fit for a beggar. Oh, may the gods one day send them all the same fate. Can you imagine what it, was, what it was like to wake and to find that they had gone? Oh, the terrible tears I shed, the anguished cries. The ships I sailed with had completely disappeared. No one stayed behind, none to help me, none to tend my overpowering sickness. I tried to explore, but all I discovered was terrible pain. And of that, there was more than enough, my son. Day after day, time slowly passed me by, alone in this ramshackle shelter. I somehow managed to shoot birds on the wing, dragging back the bowstring and strike. Then I crawl back painfully, dragging my withered foot for as long as I need to. I go and fetch water, trailing in utter agony, and in the frosts of winter, I gather kindling to break. At first, I had no heat, but by rubbing stone on stone, I found hidden sparks that keep me alive. Now I have everything that a man needs, a roof over my head, the warmth of a fire, everything, except a cure. Come on, my lad. Let me teach you about this island. No sailor would ever weigh anchor here out of choice. There are no good moorings and no welcome port where he could unload his cargo for profit. No, a wise man would have no reason to sail here. But what if someone had put in accidentally? It does happen over the course of a lifetime. Those people, when they did come, always expressed their sympathy and from time to time moved to pity would leave a bit of food or clothing. But the one thing I always asked for was never given. Safe passage home. <laughs> No, I've been here for ten years now, wasting away, suffering starvation and misery, alone. This is what the sons of Atreus and Odysseus have inflicted on me. May the gods one day make them suffer the way as I am. 
like those who came before us. I feel sorry for you, son of Poyas. I know for certain he's telling the truth. I have personal experience of the kind of malice the sons of Atreus and Odysseus are capable of inflicting. What? You hold a grudge against the damn sons of Atreus? Did they do something to provoke your anger? One day, I will show my hand and vent my rage. Then, Piscini and Sparta will know that the sons of Skyrus are fearless men. What's that, my boy? But tell me, how did they outrage you? Son of course, I will tell you. But it is hard to speak of the harm they did me when I arrived. When fate decreed that Achilles should die... Oh, no! Don't say any more! First let me understand. Are you saying that the son of Peleus is dead? He is dead. Not by the hand of a man, but a god. Shot down, so they say, by Apollo's arrow. Both the killer and the killed were noble. But I hardly know what to do next. Hear how you are disgraced, or grieve for the dead. I think you have troubles enough of your own without mourning over the misfortunes of others. That is true. Continue your story. How did they disgrace you? They came, and a ship bedecked with garlands. God like Odysseus and Phoenix, my father's mentor. They told me, and who knows whether it's true or false. Since the death of my father, it had been ordained that Tower in Troy would fall only to me. Of course, when I heard it, I wasted no time and set sail with them as quickly as possible. I wanted to pay my respects before the funeral and see my father for the first and the last time. Then there was their promise of victory. I was the one who would conquer Troy. After only two days at sea, sped by strong winds and swift tours, we landed at bitter Sigeon. When I disembarked, the army crowded around welcoming me and swore that they were seeing their lost Achilles alive again. But he lay dead and in misery. I wept. Eventually, I went to the sons of Atreus, naturally in friendship, and claimed my father's arms and possessions. But what an insolent answer they gave me! Offspring of Achilles, you may have all of your father's property, except for the arms. Another man already owns them. Laertes is son. Tears welled, stinging my eyes. I leapt up in passionate rage, smarting my anger, and said, Violators, how dare you award my arms to another man without my consent? And then, Odysseus, who was close at hand, said, Boy... It was their right to give them. I saved his arms, and I saved their master. In my great anger, I spared him nothing. I flung every insult and said it all. I was not going to lose my arms to him. And <coughs> although Odysseus was a man slow to anger, he was stung by the insult and countered, You should have been here with us, but you chose to neglect your duty. Since you cannot keep a civil tongue in your head, you will never take these arms back to Troy. Abused and insulted, I am sailing for home, deprived of what is rightfully mine by that bastard son of bastards, Odysseus. I hold the commanders accountable. An army is like a city. It reflects its leaders. If its people behave immorally, they have learned to, by example. I have told you the whole story. May the gods love an enemy of Atreus' son as much as I do. Mistress of the mountains, all-giving earth, mother of Zeus, from Pactolos' glittering streams. I called on you, sovereign mother, when the sons of Atreus outraged him by giving away his matchless father's armour to the son of Laertes. Hear this, goddess! Who rides on bull killing lions? My friends, it seems to me that you sailed with a cargo of common grievances. You and I, we sing the same song. 
I do know the work of the sons of Atreus and Odysseus, who can put any atrocity into words and lend themselves to all kinds of treachery in the hopes of perverting justice. None of this comes as a surprise, only that Ajax could stand to watch it. He was already dead. Had he lived, I would never have been cheated like this. What are you saying? He too is dead and gone? Gone. He no longer sees the light. Oh no. But Diomedes, Tydeus' son, and that spawn of Sisyphus sold to Laertes, they never die. They don't deserve to live. No, they don't. You can be sure of that. And they are thriving in the Greek army. What about my dear, old, brave friend, Nestor of Pylos? Is he still alive? He could counter their schemes with a sage advice. He is alive, but in great difficulty. His son Antilochus is dead, and he has no protection. Oh, no! No! Another two deaths too hard to bear. What can we look to when people like this are dead while Odysseus lives? He should have been counted among the dead. He is a cunning wrestler, but even the most cunning stratagems can be tripped up, Philoctetes. And where was Patroclus, your father's closest friend, when you needed him? He also was killed. Let me tell you, war never wants a man, but always takes the good. I'll bear witness to that. On that subject, let me ask you about a worthless man. With a sharp tongue and a mind for schemes. You can only mean Odysseus. <coughs> no, no, uh, not him. But a fellow named Thersites, who never knew when to keep quiet, even though it drove man mad. Is he still alive? I never saw the man, but I heard he was still alive. He would be. Evil creatures like this are never destroyed. Some unseen power takes perverse pleasure in protecting them and diverting the souls of wrongdoers and criminals away from Hades, while the just and the good are sent straight there. <laughs> no. Son of Poas, from now on I will care to view Troy and the sons of Atreus only from afar, where corruption overpowers virtue and honor is stifled, letting duplicity rule. I will never for men my loyalty. No. Rocky Scarrows will do for me. I'll be quite content at home. So, to my ship. Goodbye, son of Poas. Goodbye. May the gods restore your health. I know you want that more than anything. We must go and make ready to sail for the gods to speed us on our way. Wait, wait. Are you meaning to go now, my son? Well, yes. We must watch the weather from the ship to make ready and set sail. Then, my lad, by your mother and your father, by everything you hold dear back in your home, I beg you as a suppliant, please don't leave me alone, forsaken, living in the utter misery you've seen and heard for yourself. Take me with you. It is repulsive, I know it, to have to carry such a cargo, but steal yourself to it as befits your family. Shun disgrace and find glory and honor. If you ignore this, you degrade the good name of your family. Do it, my lad. It's, come on, it's barely a day's work. Dare to do it. I, you can stow me wherever you like, in the hold, the prow, the stern, wherever I least distress my shipmates. Say yes, my son, by Zeus, the god of suppliants. I'll, I'll even get down on my knees, despite my injuries. Ah, ah, hobble and lay. Please, don't leave me here. Take me to your land, or maybe just to Euboea. It is not far from there to Oita. I can do it. I'd only have to cross the islands of Trachis and ford the streams of Spokaeus and appear before, appear before my dear father. It's been so long, I fear he's died. So many times I tried to send word by the people who came here in the hopes that he may dispatch a ship or fetch me back home. Either he died, or the messengers couldn't have cared less for me and hurried on instead to their homes. But now I have you, my messenger, my escort. You can save me. You can be compassionate. Human fortune is fraught with danger, and life is nothing if not uncertain. To avoid, to avoid risk is to court disaster. No, the complacent should look to their lives, else they be taken by surprise or ruin. Have a heart, sir. He's told of such suffering. 
an ordeal I'd wish on no friend of mine. Sir, if you're against these despised sons of Atreus, turn their mistreatment of you into this man's gain. Take him where he needs to go. Put him aboard your good swift ship and take him home. Avoid reprisal from the gods. Be careful. You're just unaffected onlookers now. But once you grow weary of living with his sickness, you may not find it so easy to stick to your word. Not me. You would have no reason to reprimand me for such a reason. That is what you think? Let us sail. It would be shameful for me to seem less considerate than you in helping a stranger. Oh. Help him aboard. Our ship will not deny him passage. May the gods carry us safely from this island unto wherever we wish to sail. Oh, blessed day, you kind, sweet man. My fellow shipmates, if only I could show you what your friendship means to me. Let's be on the way then, once I bid farewell to my inhospitable home. Come in, let me show you how I survived and what I had to suffer. Most other men would have been crushed by such a sight. But necessity slowly taught me to endure these troubles. Wait, you should know. Two men are coming. One looks like a sailor and the other a stranger. You should find out what they want before you go in. Son of Achilles! I asked my fellow voyager here, who was posted at your ship with his two mates, to tell me where I might find you. Came across them quite by chance, you see, as I happened to weigh anchor off the same coast. I'm a trader, sailing in my humble vessel from Troy, bound for the vineyards of the Parathos. When I learned that these seafarers were your crew, I felt that I couldn't simply go on my way without first telling you what I know. I knew you'd be obliged. I take it you know nothing about your predicament or what the Greeks have in store for you. They're wasting no time setting their plans in motion. Sir, I appreciate you thinking of me. And if I am a worthy man, I will not forget your kindness. Tell me what you know. I need to learn what new plots the Greeks have against me. Old Phoenix and the sons of Theseus have taken a ship and sail in search of you. To persuade me to go back or to force me? Oh, I'm not sure. I can only tell you what I heard. A phoenix and his accomplices so desperate to please the sons of Atreus that they ran their own errands? The errand is being run, I know that, without delay. Then why did Odysseus not come in person? Perhaps he was too scared to deliver his own message. Uh, just as I put out from harbour, I saw Odysseus sailing with the son of Tydeus, seeking another man. Who was this man that Odysseus sailed after? I heard there was a man, but first, tell me who that is and whatever you do, keep it quiet. Stranger, this is the famous Philoctetes. No more questions, just pack up and get out of here as quickly as you can. What is he saying, my lad? Why is he whispering? Is this merchant making some secret deal over me? I'm not sure what he means yet, but anything he, can, he has to say, he can say to us all. Loud and clear. Son of Achilles, don't accuse me of slandering the army. That was never my intention. I'm a poor man, and the army's always rewarded my services. I am an enemy to the sons of Atreus, and this man is my most loyal friend because he hates them too. And if, as you say, you have come in friendship, you're obliged to disclose everything you know. What you are doing, boy. I can see well enough. I'll hold your seat. Then do. But speak. I'll speak. Those two men I told you I was sailing after. Him. The strong son of Tydeus and mighty Odysseus have sworn an oath to bring him back, either by conciliation or the power of force. All the Greeks heard Odysseus announce this. His every confidence will be successful, even more than the man he sails with. But why suddenly have the sons of Atreus turned their attention towards a man they exiled such a long time ago? What could have compelled them? A god? Fear of divine retribution seeking revenge for past evils? I can tell you everything since you've not heard. There was a Trojan prophet, a royal son of Priam, who went by the name of Helenus. Cunning Odysseus, who had just said his brazen and shameless, captured him in the night and brought him back in chains, publicly exhibiting his fine prize to all the Greeks. Helenus then foretold all that was asked for him, and said they would never take his city unless Philoctetes could be convinced to leave his island to go to Troy. When Odysseus heard the prophet say this, he instantly promised to fetch the man and bring him back to the Greeks. He was confident that he would come willingly, but if not, he would use force. He said they could have his head if he failed. I've told you everything, boy. I suggest that you and anyone else you care about leave now. I am a wretched man. That total fraud has sworn to persuade me to come back to the Greeks. He had an easier time to persuade me 
to come back to life after I'm dead and buried deep down in Hades and like his father to try to cheat death. I know nothing about that. I must get back to my ship. May the gods be with you and may it be for the best. Isn't it amazing, my lad, that the son of Laertes could possibly hope to soft me with words, to bring me to his ship and to deliver me to the midst of the Greeks? I'd rather listen to my most lethal of enemies, the snake that crippled me, instead of him. <laughs> that man would dare do anything to get what he wants. At least I now know that he's on his way. Let's get underway, then. Bring as much sea as possible between Odysseus and us. Good sailing with good speed. Gives good sleep once the work is done. We'll sail just as soon as the headwind dies down. It's far too fierce to put out at the moment. There's always fair sailing when fleeing from evil. Not always. The weather is also against them. No wind has ever averted the pirate when there's an opportunity to ransack and steal. Then we'll go. Just as soon as you collect everything you need from inside. There are a few things, not much. And they're not found on board my ship? I keep a special herb that I keep to soothe my pain and to help manage the wound. Fetch it. Is there anything else? Uh, I need any arrows that might have fallen and, and missed, maybe. No one else can have them. Then, is this your famous bow? I'm holding the one and only. Could I see it? I mean, even handle it? For you, my son, I will grant your wish. There's nothing I would do for you. Uh, I want to take it. I really do, but I feel I should be cautious. Is it allowed? If not, I, I will relent. You speak respectfully, my son. Yes, it is allowed. You make me see the light of life again. To see my homeland again. My father, my old friends. You've lifted me from beneath the feet of my enemies and placed me beyond their grasp. Don't worry. The bow will be yours to hold. And then to give back to the hand that gave it. You'll be able to boast because of your compassion. No other... Uh, you were able to hold the bow that no other mortal man has ever held. I had it because I too performed the kindness. I am fortunate to know you and earn your friendship. One who knows how to give and take a kindness will always gain a priceless friend. Now, please, go in. I will, but come with me. I'm weak, and I need your help. I once heard a story, though I never saw it myself, of one who dared to try to bed the wife of Zeus. He was caught by Cronus' mighty son and lashed to the rim of an ever-running wheel. But I have never seen or heard of any mortal suffering a more hateful fate than this man's. No crime was committed. No one was wronged. He treated others as they treated him. Did he deserve to come to this? How can he stand to listen alone to the rush of the surrounding seas, trying to keep a grip on a life so steeped in grief? He was his own neighbour, lame and alone. No one was near to help him bear his torment. No one heard the, the shrieks and the cries, his answer to the agony of the putrefying flesh and blood. No one dressed the searing streams that leached from his maggot-infested, mutilated foot, and when he was consumed in pain, no one tended to him with soothing herbal balms. Once his debilitating agony had waned, he would try to crawl, but only so far. A helpless infant reaching out, scavenging to meet his meagre needs. He could never harvest the fruits of the blessed earth, nor reap the bounty that men work from the land. To cure the pangs of hunger, the only solution were the swift flight struck from his deadly bow. Ah, poor soul. For ten years he never enjoyed the taste of wine. Instead, he scraped his way in search of any stagnant pool that could quench his thirst. But... 
Now he has met a noble son. He will be happy and strong again. All his troubles now lie behind him. After all this time, he will sail away, slicing the sea on our swift ship, carried home to the Marlian nymphs, to the riverbanks of Mount Spicaeus, to the peak of Mount Oita, where Heracles himself, Lord of the Shining Shield, rose in a blaze of his father's heavenly fire. from you any longer. Ah, ah, it's coming again. Ah, not again. I'm finished. The sickness is eating away at me. Ah, 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 oh, God. By all the gods, if you're carrying a sword, grab it and strike at my heel. Hack it off, clean through. Don't worry about me. Just do it quickly, quickly. Oh, oh. What is this? All of a sudden, what is making you scream like this? You know what this is, my son. What? Boy, you know. I know nothing. What is wrong? How could you not know? Oh. Your sickness is truly oh. unbearable. Oh. Well, then you know. Have pity. What can I do? Don't leave me. Don't be scared away. It comes over me from time to time. But it passes again when she has satisfied her hunger. You poor man. Every sorrow has struck you. Give me your hand. Let me help. No, 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 no. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. But here, take my bow and keep it safe for me. Just until the pain subsides. Let me sleep. If I slip into sleep, the sickness slows. Let me rest quietly now. But swear to me, my son, if those men come here looking for me, you promise me by all the gods that under no circumstances whatsoever... Willingly or unwillingly, you'll never, ever give them my bow. If you do, you'll only condemn, you'll not only condemn me, your suppliant, but also yourself. Don't worry. No one else but you and I will hold the bow. Now, give it to me in good faith. Here, take it. But pray to the envious gods that it may not show you the same sorrow it showed me and its former owner. Gods, grant both our wishes. A swift, smooth sailing to wherever heaven wills, to wherever our destiny may lie. Oh, my boy, you're wasting your breath. I can feel the black blood boiling up again, bursting through my wounds. Oh, oh, there's, more to, there's more to come. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh, oh. It's coming again, breaking over me, scumming. Ah, no, oh, no, oh God, oh God. Don't, don't be scared away. You know what this is. Ah, ah, oh, oh, Decius, if you could only feel this pain, feel your frame split in two, your guts wrench in your chest. Oh, oh God. You two commanders, Menelaus and Agamemnon, why did you not suffer for as long as I did? Oh, oh God. Why me? Me? Death. Death. I'm calling for you. Every day I call for you. Why do you never come? Oh, my boy. Take hold of me and pray, pray to the fire, fires of Lemnos to engulf me. 
I want so fit to do the same for the son of Zeus in exchange for the weapon you now keep safe for me. What? Say something. Say something. Why are you quiet? What are you thinking? My heart is bursting with grief. For your pain. <laughs> oh, my son, be bold. The pain strikes sharply, but it passes quickly. Just don't, don't leave me here. We'll stay here, don't worry. You'll stay? You can be sure of that. I do not need to remind you of my oath, my boy. I'm not allowed to leave without you. I want your hand on it. I'll give it to stay. Oh. No. Let me go there. Take me there. Where? Up there. What madness is this? Let me go, let me go. Go where? Let me go, I'm telling you. Oh. What is wrong? Uh, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Stay calm. I'll you will kill me. I'll let you go. Earth. Earth. Please let me die. Take me under. I cannot take this pain. I think you'll soon be asleep. His eyes are closed and he can't hold his head up. His whole body is drenched in sweat. A stream of blood burst through his heel. Friends, let's leave him in peace and let him rest. Sleep with no torment, sleep with no pain. Come to our gentle prayers. Bring your blessing, blessed Lord. Keep his eyes shrouded serenely with the mist that clouds his sleep. Come, come, our Lord of healing powers. Young man, where do you stand? What to think? How to make the next move? He sleeps. Our time is now. Opportunity is everything and victories are made in a moment. Though he sleeps, I can see that the bow is worthless if we sail away without him. God's willing, he too will be crowned with victory. The shame would be on us. We succeeded through treachery. But, my boy, won't the gods see to that? Speak softly now, son. Whisper. A sick man is easily awoken from restless sleep. You should explore the limits of all you can do by stealth to do what you have to do. If you carry on in this attitude towards him, and you know exactly what I mean, I can foresee only trouble ahead. The wind is with you, lad. The wind is with you. He won't see. He's helpless, splayed out in his darkness. Sleep in the sun is the soundest. Immobilized, as good as dead in Hades. Look for yourself. Are you sure of what you're saying? As I understand it, boy, the strongest plan has no fear. Keep quiet and keep your wits about. He's holding his head and opening his eyes. Ah... Uh. Sunlight, sleep's successor. I never would have dreamed that strangers one day would watch over me. Never could I have hoped that you would stay with me, soothing my wound, easing my pain. Those brave sons of Atreus certainly couldn't stomach their responsibility to me. But you, your nature is noble, of noble blood. And you were never repulsed by the foul stench or the anguished cries. Now, the pain has passed for a while. A breathing space. Forgetfulness. A little bit of welcome rest. So help me up. So as soon as I regain, regain my strength, we can be on our way. I'm glad you see you free from pain, alive and well. <laughs> I can't quite believe it. You went through such intense agony. I thought you were surely going to die. Come on, let's get you up. Or, if you'd like, my man will lift you. It's no trouble. They'll help. We're all in this together. Thank you, my son. Yes, help me up as you said. But leave them out of it. No need to discuss them with the foul stench before we need to. It'll be hard enough on them once I'm aboard. All right. 
hold onto my hand and lift yourself up. Don't worry about it. I'm used to this. I'll get up myself. What should I do now? What's this? What are you muttering about? I'm confused. It's difficult to know what to say. Difficult? Don't say that. But it's true. So, are you, have you changed your mind now? Do I disgust you? What is disgusting is when a man abandons his own true nature and acts shamefully. There's nothing in what you're doing or saying that could disgrace the image of your father. You're helping a decent man. He'll look as if I have no shame and I'm tormented by his. Not by your acts, but what you're saying worries me. What should I do? Zeus, must I be twice treacherous? Both hide the truth and speak such bare-faced lies? There's no mistaking it. This man is out to betray me. He wants to sail away and abandon me here. Not abandon you, but carry you on a harsh sailing, and it's been tormenting me. What are you saying? I don't understand. I can't hide it. You have to sail to Troy, to the Greeks, as an instrument to the sons of Atreus. No, don't say that. Don't be mourned until you learn. Learn what? What are you planning to do with me? Rescue you, and then together we will lay waste to the land of Troy. So this is the truth. This is what you really want. We are compelled by necessity. Don't be angry. You wretched man. I'm betrayed. Finished. You, stranger. What have you done to me? Give me back my bow. I cannot. It is my duty and in my interest to obey the orders of my commanders. Firebrand. <laughs> Demon! Conniving monster! What have you done to me? You have deceived me! Are you not ashamed to look at me? Bastard! I was your suppliant! I pleaded for your help! Boy, by stealing my bow, take away my means to survive! Give it back, I beg you! Give it back, I beseech you! Boy, do not rob me of my life! He turns away! He won't speak to me. He's not going to give it back. Oh, you base, you sea cliffs, wild beasts of the rocks, jagged coastline, hear me! No one else will hear me speak. Hear how the son of Achilles has treated me. He swore to carry me home, but he drags me to Troy. He gave me his hand, but took my bow. The bow of Heracles, the son of Zeus. He meets to claim it in the name of the Greeks. He drags me off as if he had captured a fierce enemy, but he's only killing a corpse, the ghost of a man. In my prime, he never would have taken me. And even now, he had to resort to deceit. I've been taken in, poor fool. What can I do? Give it back. Be true to yourself. You can do it. Say something. Have you nothing to say? Then all is lost. Twin caves half in the rock. Once again I return, but unarmed, with no means to survive. In this hovel, my desolate life will end. I'll no longer fell any birds on the wing. Beasts of the field with my bow. Oh. Now has your time come. My prey will prey on me. The animals that once fed me will feed on me. My blood and recompense for theirs. Life for life. I've been deceived by someone who seemed so innocent. I hope you die. No. Not yet. One last attempt. You may yet change your mind. If not, then die. What do you want us to do, sir? Should we set sail or do what he wants? I feel so sorry for him. I can't help it. My safety is right. Have mercy, my son. Let it not be said in scorn that you deceived me. What should I do? I wish I never left Skyros and had to, pay, to face such unbearable pain. You're not a bad lad, but I fear the bad men have trained you to call me and act ruthlessly. 
Better to leave that to those best suited to it. You should sail away. But give me back my bow. What should we do? Men? Traitor! What do you think you are doing? Get away from there and give me that bow. What's this? Do I hear Odysseus? Odysseus for sure, standing before you. I'm betrayed. Finished. It was him. He said that Trevor stole my bow. Yes, this was my work. I admit it. Give me back my bow, boy. Give it back. That he will not do, though he may want to. And you must come with us, even if we have to drag you. You shameless bastard. You would use force? There's nothing you would sink to. If you wouldn't come of your own free will. No, I say no. And I say yes. You have no choice. This was decreed. I'm cursed. My father raised a slave. I'm not fit to be called a free man. No. Come with us to Troy. Stand with the bravest of men. Together, you will crumble the city to dust. Never. I'll never suffer that, not for as long as I stand over the steep cliffs of this island. And what could you do? Oh, I'll throw myself against the rocks. I shatter my head. Don't hurt him! Don't hurt him, Jeremy! If only my hands could draw my bow. But they've fallen prey to Odysseus. You, with your sick, unfeeling mind, snare in again and snare me in your trap. You hid behind this boy, who I never knew was far too good for you, but well worthy of me. He, his only thought was to agonize, was to obey his orders. Now he agonizes over his mistake and the wrong he's done to me. Your sly-eyed sword and sword has schooled him in the evil arts of espionage, against his will and his very nature. Now you want to tie me up and carry me away from the place where you condemned me to a living death. No friends. No hope. No hope. Why won't you die? I have prayed so many times for your death, but I get nothing good from the gods. You're lucky to be alive, while I live in misery, ridiculed by you and those sons of Atreus you now serve so well. Yet, you have to be yoked to the expedition by fraud and force, whereas I, the total wretch, freely sailed by seven ships into dishonor and disgrace, banished here by them. You said it was them. They said it was you. Why not? Why me? Why take me away? I am nothing and have long been dead to you. How can it be, accursed man, that you no longer re- find me a repellent quipper? If I say it with you, how could you pour libations to the gods or sacrifice? Hmm? Isn't that how you justified my ruining me here? I hope you suffer. And if there's any justice in the heavens, you will suffer. I know there is, because you would never have sailed all the way for such a wretch like me if the gods had the day that you needed me. Lands of my ancestors, omnipotent gods, ah, after all this time, avenge me, avenge me! If you have any pity, punish them all! I know I've lived the most pitiful life, but if I live to see any of them annihilated, that would be my cure. An embittered man. He's indignant, Odysseus. His suffering has not softened his resolve. I could answer him at length, if time allowed. But the way things stand, I will say one thing. I am whatever kind of man I need to be. And as for deciding matters of morality, there is no man more virtuous. It is in my nature to always want to win. Except, in your case, I will gladly give way. Take your hands off him. Let him go. We don't need him now that we have his bow in our possession. Choose for a skilled at such things, and I dare say I could shoot that bow just as well as you. And Dame is true. So... We don't need you at all. Enjoy your long walks on Lemnos. We must go. This prize might bring me the honours that rightfully should have been yours. Oh, misery. What can I do? Do you mean to go before the Greeks with my bow? 
I've heard enough. We are leaving. Son of Achilles. Have you nothing to say? Are you just going to leave? Come on. You don't look at him. Your generosity will ruin everything. My friends, you too? Are you abandoning me? Have you no pity? He is our commander. What he says to you, we say the same. I will be told that I am too compassionate, but wait here if that's what he wants. At least until the crew has prepared for sea and we have said our prayers to the gods. We must go. Come quickly when we send word. Hollow cave, carved in the rock. It was my cruel fate to never leave here. Now you will be the only witness to my lonely death. Oh, me, me, me. My sad shelter that echoed with my pain. How will I survive these days? What hope of sustenance do I have? Up there, in the whistling breeze, the birds will flutter by. Cannot catch them now. It was you. You cursed yourself. You poor, deluded man. This fate is not forced upon you or beyond the bound of your control. Huh? You had your chance to make the prudent choice. There was a better way. You had to choose the worst. I am cursed. Cursed! Abused in my agony. Abandoned. Alone. For the rest of time. Dead. Oh, how will I survive these days? Oh, my winged weapon. You will provide for me no more. I have fallen prey to a duplicitous mind. Oh, to see him, the master of this ambush, suffer for as long as I have. It is destiny. Heaven sent destiny. This is no trick. I had no hand in it. Send your spite at others. Don't curse me. Don't throw away my friendship. Why me? Me? He sits out there by the surge of grey sea, laughing at me, flaunting my bow, which no other mortal man has ever owned. Oh, my beloved bow, my friend, ripped away from my hands. If only you could feel. You'd look with pity upon this follower of Heracles who'll never hold you again. You have passed hands now. You have a new master now. A tactician manipulates you now. And you'll see the blade of deceit in the face of my most hated enemy, an infinite lies devised against me. Oh, Zeus! A man should say what he thinks is right, but once said he should restrain himself from firing off this kind of insult. Odysseus is one acting for many. He serves the common will as duty to his fellow men. Oh, my soaring prey, bright-eyed beasts of the high pasture. Fly no more from your lairs. I don't hold any power anymore. All my arrows are gone. Oh, I am cursed. Roam free. You have nothing to fear from me now. Nothing. Now is your time. Take blood for blood and feast upon my tainted flesh. How will I survive these days? How can a man live on air if he has no means to harvest the abundant earth? By the gods! If you have any respect for a stranger who wishes you goodwill, listen! Consider this, and consider it well. You can avoid this fate. It feeds on your self-pity and will never subside so long as it coexists with your self-inflicted hardship. Again and again you make me remember my pain. You were the kindest of any who came. Why do you destroy me? What have you done to me? What do you mean? 
Was it always your plan to take me to Troy, the city that I hate? It is for the best. Go then! Leave me alone! We'd be grateful to. Very grateful. Happy to oblige. Come on then, back to the ships. No! Man your stations! No, 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 Zeus! Please stay! By Zeus who hears curses, please! Oh, calm yourself! Friends, please stay! What do you want? Oh my god. Goddess! Goddess! I'm finished! Foot! Foot! What will I do with you for the rest of my miserable life? Oh. Oh. Friends, please, come back again. Come back again and do what? Have you changed your mind? Never, never, you can be sure of that. Not even if the god of burning thunder threatens to blast me with lightning. Death to Troy and all the men beneath the walls who cast this cripple out. But friends, do one thing for me. What are you asking? A sword? If you can spare one. Or an axe. Any weapon that you can bring me. And what do you mean to do? Hack up this body piece by piece. Death is what I mean. Death! But why? I seek my father. Where? He's in Hades. He no longer sees the light. Oh. Ancestral city. If only I could see you again. Why did I ever leave that holy river? To go and fight for the Greeks? Now I'm nothing. Nothing! I should have been long gone by now and on my way back to this ship. But I see Odysseus approaching. And the son of Achilles. Will you please tell me what it is that has made you turn around and return here in such a hurry? I need to put right what I did wrong. What is this? What did you do wrong? I obeyed you and the Greeks. Who should that disturb you? I cheated a man using treachery and deceit. Who? I hope this isn't some thoughtless new scheme. Thoughtless? No, not for the son of Boas. I'm afraid to hear what you're going to do. With bow I stole and will return. Zeus, what did you say? You're giving it back? Yes, I have no right to take it. I acted shamefully. By all the gods, are you trying to mock me? If it's mockery for me to speak the truth. Son of Achilles, what have you said? Must I repeat myself over and over? I wish I had heard it the first time. Then, don't worry, there's nothing more to say. There is something, something that will stop this. What do you mean? Who could stand in my way? The entire Greek army that I represent. You're supposed to be wise, yet you don't speak wisely. Nothing you are doing could be called wise. I'd rather be just than wise. How is it wise to surrender what you gained by following my strategy? It was wrong. I acted shamefully. And now, I must try to set things right. Are you not afraid of what the Greek army will do? I have nothing to fear with justice at my side. And what if I should choose to use violence? You cannot force me to obey you. Then we will fight not only the Trojans, but you as well. What will be, will be. Watch me reach for my sword. My hand is on the hilt. Watch me reach for mine, just quicker. I've had enough of this. I will tell the army of this and they will deal with you. At last. Wisdom. Stay wise, Odysseus. We might keep you out of trouble. You, there. Son of Boas. Philoctetes. Come out of your cave. Come out. What is all this shouting? Why are you calling me? What do you want with me now? Ah, me! This can't be nothing good. More bleak news? Have you come to make my misery any worse? Don't worry, just listen to what I have to say. Oh, but I do worry. I once listened to your promises, but fair words from you have proven pa- foul to me. Is there no room for remorse? You spoke just like this when you stole my bow. A faithful friend with a poisoned heart. No, not anymore. Just please tell me whether you've decided to stay here in this dress or sail away with us. Stop! Don't say anymore. You're wasting your breath. Have you decided? More than words can say. I wish I could persuade you to change your mind, but I don't have the words, so I'll stop. It would have been futile. You'll never earn my trust or win my heart. You have stolen the one thing that sustained my life. And now you come here and offer up advice. Your father has born a wretched son. I want you dead, all of you. The sons of Atreus, the son of Laertes, and you. Put an end to your curses and take your bow from my open hand. 
Is this another trick? No, I swear it by the highest power of Zeus. Welcome. Welcome words. If they were true. My actions will prove my words. Just hold out your hand and take possession of your boat. I will not allow this! As the gods are my witnesses, in the name of the sons of Atreus and the entire Greek army! What is this? Do I hear Odysseus again? Indeed you do, and here I am. The same Odysseus who will drag you to Troy by force, whether the son of Achilles likes it or not. Then you'll pay for it, if this arrow flies right! No, don't shoot that arrow! Boy, let me shoot! And help me! No, don't shoot! What are you doing to me? I can shoot him, I have my bow, my most hated enemy! It wouldn't be honorable for either of us. Die, you goddamn bastard, die! There he flees. Now this I know now. Those Greek commanders who claim to speak for the army are nothing but liars. Both at the first sign of a fight. <laughs> Cowards! Good, but you have your bow now. There is no reason for any anger or resentment against me. Fair enough. You've proven your true nature, my boy. Show what you really made. You are not the spawn of Sisyphus. You are the son of Achilles. Now, what a glorious life you led, old Achilles. Fame is still a death. Thank you for speaking so well of my father and me. But listen to what I have to say. It's for your own good. Mortals must accept whatever the gods give. But when they steep themselves in self-inflicted misery as you do, no one will ever feel pity or remorse. Your wilderness has made you immovable. You won't take any advice, and if anyone does offer kind advice, you hate him for it. They say he's against you, and declare him your sworn enemy. But I'll speak. And may Zeus, God of Oats, Witness, mark my words, and inscribe them on your heart. This hideous wound was sent down by the gods because you disturbed the guardian of Christy, the snake that stealthily protects her open shrine. As long as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, you will never be free from this soaring pain unless you go willingly to the plains of Troy. The sons of Asclepius, our allies, who will treat you and administer a cure. Then, together, we will take this bow and tear down Troy. Let me tell you how I know this. We're holding a Trojan prisoner, Helenus, the best of all the prophets. He has seen clearly what will come to pass and has declared that this summer we'll see the fall of Troy. He has staked his life on this. Now you know, so be generous and give way. The rewards will only be of benefit to you. You will be hailed as the bravest of all the Greeks. Once healing hands have cured you, and you have won unparalleled fame at Troy, the city that caused endless grief. Oh, spiteful life. Why me? Why do I still have to live in the light? Let me sink down into the depths of Hades. Ah, me. What should I do? Doubt his words when he has given me such kind counsel? Do I give way then? But how can I stand in the sight of man in such a sorry state? My eyes have witnessed all my sufferings. But how can they bear to see the sons of Atreus and Odysseus, the man who tried to destroy me? It is not the hurt of past indignities that smarts, but the vision of the corruption that is to come. I question your motives there. You should not be going to Troy. You should be keeping me from going. I, it is an outrage that they prevented you from inheriting your father's arms. You promised me to carry me home, fulfill your word. I, you, you, you can come to Skyros and stay a while. You'll be blessed twice by me and my father. Leave twisted man to twisted end. By not a better evil man, the nature will never appear here. There is a lot of sense in what you're saying, Sir Pause. But I need you to trust the gods, 
take my word and sail away from this land as my friend. To the Trojan plains, to the sons of Atreus, with this scribbled foot. To those who will free you from this pain, heal your wounds, save you from this sickness. What kind of advice is this? I can see what will be best for both of us. Are you not ashamed to say such a thing before the gods? Should one feel shame when helping friends? Is this helping me or the sons of Atreus? You, I am your friend. And yet, speaking friendship. Still, you deliver me to my enemies, then. Oh, please, learn not to be so defiant when in trouble. Your words will destroy me, I know it. They won't. You just refuse to understand. I know that the sons of Atreus have abandoned me. They abandoned you. But now they want to rescue you. Never. If that means that I have to agree to go to Troy. I don't know what else can I do if I cannot persuade you or make you believe anything I say. It would be easier for me to stop trying, let you suffer on with no hope of ever being saved. Let me suffer what I need to suffer. But you, you promised. You gave me your hand on it. You said you'd take me home. Fulfill your oath. I had my fill of misery and grief. If that is what you think, we'll go. What noble words. Step carefully with me. <laughs> with all my strength. How will I avoid getting confronted by the Greeks? Ignore them. What if they invade my country? I'll be there. What can you do? I have the bow of Heracles. What are you saying? I'll drive them away. Then say goodbye to this place and let's go. Let's Not go. yet, son of Poyas, until you have heard my words. Hear the voice of Heracles. Look upon his form. It is for your sake that I have left the heights of heaven to reveal the plan of Zeus. Stop this present journey. Listen to the word. First, know of my fortune. Once I had endured my many labors, I won the immortal excellence you see before you. And for you also, it has been ordained that your suffering be repaid with a life of glory. Go with this man to Troy. Be healed of this vicious wound. Then, his army's champion, kill Paris, cause of the harm with my bow. Carry the spoils to the ocean heights as a joy to your father, Poyas. From this rich war prize, dedicate a portion to me. Make an offering of my pyre in recompense for my bow. Son of Achilles, I say the same to you. You cannot take Troy without him, nor he without you. Twin lions, you must protect each other. Asclepius the healer I will send to Troy. Twice must the city fall to my bow. But be warned, when you lay waste to the land, show true respect for the things of the gods. Reverence does not die where men do. In life as in death, it is immortal. Oh, how I've longed to hear that voice. I've waited for you to come for so long. I will not go against your word. I also consent. Delay no longer. The time is right. The winds are fair for sailing. Let me bid farewell to this land. Farewell, cavern that shared my watch. And you, spirits of the field and the spring. Dashing sea, spraying me with sea wash blasted by the southern wind. And you, rock of Hermes, that echoed with all my pain the sounds of all my sorrows. And you, like your waterfalls and fresh springs, I'm leaving you now, leaving you for good, just when I'd given up hope. Farewell, Isle of Lemnos. May you steer me on a fair and fortunate course, wherever almighty sage should send me. A friend's good, good thoughts, and the invincible demigod have brought me fulfillment. We will all set sail together. Pray to the spirits of the deep to send us safely on this voyage. 